I think at the heart of entrepreneurship is a sense of ownership. Risto, great to have you with us today. And you are an entrepreneur. You build a company, F-Secure. You transformed Nokia significantly. The question, of course, people have, what does it take to make these things happen? Well, I think at the heart of entrepreneurship is a sense of ownership. When you truly feel accountable for the company you work for, then you do what is necessary. And you have maybe more courage to do unorthodox things because you know that the alternative would be your fault. If you fail, it is really your fault. You are accountable. You had the challenges for your two companies. What are the challenges that Europe faces? Where do we stand as Europe when it comes to digital? And what should we do to improve the situation? Well, we are unfortunately the old continent and we are still mesmerized of our, by our past success. And if you look at research in Europe, we are doing very well. We do more research than the US or China. If you look at our ability to transform that research into businesses, we are very, very poor. Out of the 40 largest technology companies in the world, only five are European. And if it would be proportional to the amount of research we publish, we should have about 40%. So about 16 should be European. So we're very poor in building companies. If we look at the actors involved there, let's start with the researchers. Can they change to make more companies happen? And what should they do? Well, academic entrepreneurship is not a big power anywhere in the world. If you look at the biggest technology companies that have been established over the last 30 years, actually very few of them have been established by researchers. Many of them have been established by university dropouts, more actually than by researchers. But of course, researchers would, should want to have an impact, not just by publishing papers, but actually seeing the results of their work being used to benefit people. And if you want to have that impact, I think it's more likely that businesses will be created based on your research. In Europe, there is a strong emphasis on publishing scientific papers. In the US, you see more a balance between publishing scientific papers, but also publishing patents. Mm -hmm. Should European universities focus more on IP generation and writing patents, in your opinion? Well, I think that would make sense. And European companies also should focus more on, on patents. Nokia has one of the largest patent portfolios in the whole world. And it is a, a stronghold for us, both financially, as well as a, a sort of a exciting way for us to, to monetize and, and announce our research results. We have nine Nobel Prizes based on our research. We have invented some of the most meaningful technologies in the world, starting from this transistor. What can European IT companies do to grow the landscape of European companies? Well, the interesting thing is that if we look at the five European companies that are among the top 40 in the world, the youngest one of them was actually established in 1972. And since 1972, no single European new technology company have, has risen to that list of top 40 whereas there are many American companies and many Chinese companies that are much younger than that on that list. The average age of the five European top 40 technology companies is over 100 years, whereas that same age for the US companies is a little bit over 20 years. So it's not about what the large European IT companies could do, it's how do we create a framework, how do we create a society where new businesses can be born and can grow to a global scale. That actually brings me to the next actor in this play. 
You mentioned there should be a landscape that allows the creation and birth of new companies. Policymakers play an important role there. What should European policymakers do to create such a landscape? Policymakers should really aim to create a Europe where investment in R&D is attractive for companies. They should aim to establish regulation that allows European technology companies to achieve scale, which means they should actually encourage or at least be neutral about consolidation so that we can create bigger entities and they should be projecting their soft power the same way that China and the United States does to support the European champions globally. We're not asking anything except a level playing field. That Europe does roughly the same things that are done by the United States and China. Otherwise, we won't have a chance. I know that the topic of cybersecurity is close to your heart. Your company, F-Secure, but also for Nokia, very important topic. With the proliferation of digital technology, the exposure to cyber threats grows almost exponential, one could say. What is the state of cybersecurity in Europe? Are we at the right level? Are we well protected? Are we taking care of our critical infrastructures, of our data? Well, the European level of cybersecurity is very difficult to define as is that for the United States or China or any other region because there are so many different levels. So for individual companies it varies a lot. Some companies invest a lot, they are very professional, some have no idea. For example, banks are very advanced in Europe and in the US everywhere because they have to be. They're always attacked. If we think about the authorities, they can only work efficiently if they have scale. So in the United States, there are federal authorities that operate in all of America and actually globally. In Europe, most of the authorities are national. And when something happens in the cyberspace, you have to react in perhaps sometimes in seconds, sometimes in minutes, or at least in hours. And for the Germans, to get something physically done in the UK, for example, that somebody goes and pulls a plug from a server in Liverpool. There is no way for the European authorities to, to do that because we have national borders. In the United States, that can be done. In China, that can be done. So we need more cooperation. We need more concrete tools for the authorities. And it's not actually a European issue. We also need this between the European authorities and the American authorities and the South American authorities and the African authorities. At the same time, we see that cybersecurity also becomes a topic of geopolitics. Information gathering by nation states has been going on for thousands of years. The digital environment is the holy grail for the intelligence community. The mobile phone that you carry in your pocket is a microphone, it's a camera. It senses your heartbeat, it senses your mood. It's always on and it's always connected. That's the holy grail of information gathering. The current critical infrastructure where electricity won't flow without communications. And of course communications will stop if there's no electricity. We are completely dependent on that critical infrastructure. And by disrupting that, you can bring any country to its knees. So, of course, these intelligence agencies and military opera operatives are very focused on the digital infrastructure. 5G is raising this to a new level because you can connect so many more devices, billions and billions of devices, so there's more data. It's more valuable. And, of course, if it's more valuable, then by attacking it, you cause more damage. Are our policymakers in Europe well enough aware of this or is more education definitely needed? I think policymakers need more education on a number of technology topics. And maybe the top two, in my opinion, would be machine learning and AI. They need to understand that in order to be able to create the right regulation. 
And currently they feel that they, they don't need to understand it. They just create laws. And how can you create laws when you don't understand the fundamental forces that will shape the future society? And then cybersecurity being the other one. These, they definitely need more education on. Risto, I want to thank you very much for your contribution, for sharing your insights and your thoughts. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.